Hello everyone, this is Dr. Kofelt again, and we are going to look at reactions between strong acids and bases and weak acids and bases. We're going to look at the difference between an Arrhenius and a Bronsted acid or base, and we're going to look at how the number of hydrogens um, change the way an acid works, and so how we name those. And then we're going to predict products again. Uh, this time we're using we're going to predict neutralization products between the acids and the bases. So an acid-base reaction is super important because we see these in our everyday life, and we also see them in biology. And most bio biological um, reactions are going to be some type of acid-base reaction. And so, uh, as we study these, um, we're going to see that we combine an acid and a base together. And when we do that, they will eventually neutralize each other. And so that's why we call them neutralization reactions. So we identified some strong acids in section 4.1 that ionize completely. And if you recall, they are here provided for your entertainment. Um, you can also have strong bases, and strong bases are those that are hydroxides, okay, that they have that hydroxide at the end, just like you have the H at the beginning of the acid. The hydroxide's at the end for the base, for the strong base, and they're in group one, and then the heavy group two, okay, so um, calcium, strontium, and barium. Um, and those are going to be your strong bases. And so if they're not on this list, you can assume that they are not strong, therefore they are weak, right? Okay. So we define an acid as a substance that ionizes in water to produce hydrogen ions, and a base is something that produces hydroxide ions. This definition was due to Svante Arrhenius, who was a Swedish chemist. And that worked okay as long as we were talking about things in water. But we needed a better definition of that because sometimes we would have a gas in water or, you know, some other state. And so uh, Johan Bronsted, who was a Danish chemist, um, in 1932 came up with a slightly different um, definition. A Bronsted acid is a proton donor and a Bronsted base is a proton acceptor. And in this context, a proton refers to a hydrogen ion. So that's a hydrogen element that's lost its electron. Okay, and so it is a hydrogen ion, H+. It's a proton because hydrogen did have one proton and one electron and no neutrons. Okay, it's the lightest um, element we have. And if you lose that electron, then all you've got left is a proton. So that's why we call it the proton. So... An ammonia is a base in both Arrhenius and Bronsted, okay, um, because it does have that OH when it's in water, but it also um, donates a proton or accepts a proton, depending on, because the base is going to accept the proton and turn into the NH4+. Plus. The NH4 plus can lose the electron and turn back into the base, okay? HF, which is a weak acid, because it's not on the strong list, is also an acid in both Arrhenius and Bronsted, okay? It forms in water what we call the hydronium ion, which is H3O plus. So basically, it's added its proton or donated its proton to a water molecule. Now, they're basically an H plus and an H3O plus are basically the same thing as far as how they act in water. 
So both the both of these are meeting the definition of the Bronsted, okay? And so in throughout our textbook um, and pretty much in most chemistry, um, the H plus is the same as the hydronium, okay? So as I said, the Bronsted was came up because some things are gases and solids and things like that, but they're still accepting or donating protons. And so the Bronsted actually allowed us to take that further than just in aqueous solutions. So acids and bases can have different numbers of hydrogens in the um, acid or um, you can have more hydroxides too in the bases, but mainly in the, the acids, we look at different numbers of protons that can donate. And so if it has one proton, like hydrochloric acid has one proton to donate, we call that a monoprotic, mono one protic, meaning proton, acid. Sulfuric acid has two, so we call it a diprotic. Triprotics are things like phosphoric acid, which have three protons. In general, though, once it's more than one proton, the, the general description is a polyprotic acid. Sulfuric is only strong in its first ionization. So like what I'm saying is, it can donate the first proton and form this hydrogen sulfate ion. Then that hydrogen sulfate, since it's still got a hydrogen, can donate another one, but this time it's gonna act as a weak acid, okay? And so it will be a weak acid, so which means that it's in dynamic equilibrium and it can go back and forth. The sulfuric is strong, and when it just donates that first um, hydrogen, then it is strong. All the rest of these poly products are going to be weak. Okay, they're going to be weak. So, and each successive ionization gets weaker and weaker. So the neutralization reaction is called that because when you put a acid and a base together, they don't ionize the, the um, they're not ionized by the water molecule. They are um, reacted in such a way that they form water and a salt, okay? And the salt is an ionic compound. It's made up of a cation and an anion, okay? And then you'll have liquid water as well. So here's your molecular formula for a strong acid and a strong base, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. And notice that our products are liquid water and sodium chloride and in this case sodium chloride is soluble so it's aqueous but notice liquids like liquid water does not ionize okay so since it does not ionize in your ionic and net ionic equations it is written as a liquid so you your net ionic for a strong acid strong base is always going to be H plus plus OH minus giving you liquid water because everything else is just hanging out being spectators. Okay, so write and balance the molecular equation and then give the ionic and net ionic equation for neutralization between barium hydroxide and hydrofluoric acid. So going to do the molecular first and we can easily identify which is an acid and which is a base because the acid is going to have the hydrogen written first 
the strong base is going to have that hydroxide, okay? So I'm, I'm just going to predict the products. The first thing I'm going to do is I know that I'm going to swap these anions, right? So it's going to end up with BAF plus H, OH and H is H2O, right? And I said in these acid-base reactions, that's going to be a liquid. What about BAF? Do we need, do we remember from our solubility rules, is barium fluoride going to be soluble or insoluble? I think it's insoluble, if you go back and look, um, because barium is a heady, okay, so we're going to say that's a solid. And so if I go back and I'm going to write, so that was your molecular, if you recall, then the ionic, these first reactants are going to be ions. So I've got barium 2 plus plus two hydroxides plus H, whoop, HF, right? Because HF is a weak acid, right? So this is a weak acid and a strong base. So it is still aqueous, but it's not ionized. So, and let's see, oh wait, I need to make sure that this is balanced. So, barium hydroxides, F, oh, so barium is a plus two, so how many fluorines is that going to take? It's going to take two. So I'm going to have to have two of these, and then in order for that to balance, I'll need two waters. I'm not going through the whole process of balancing. You feel free to do that. Most acid bases are going to be super simple to um, balance. You just got to make sure that you've written the formula correctly. All right. And so I've got barium 2 plus plus 2 OH minus plus 2 HS because I've got to use my um, balance. And then that formed an insoluble salt plus two liquid waters. So that's my ionic. Notice there are no spectators in this reaction. So this, in this case, the ionic is the same as the net ionic. Notice this time when you do it, that you're starting with a solid, which means that it's not going to be in ions. Okay, it's not going to be in ions. So, and this is a strong acid, which means it will be in ions. All right, so have fun. That's it. The next, the next section that we're going to do is we're going to talk about things that are soluble and how concentrated they are versus how diluted they are. So stay tuned.